So finally assembled, this is the Kado DX Island Platform Set. It's basically a Japanese suburban train station in N scale. And before we get started, I'd like to thank BanzaiHobby.com for sponsoring this video and sending me this to review. They are an online hobby store in Japan, so check them out. Alright, so let's first begin here in the front. At the tip of the platform, we have a stairs and a barricade. There are actually separately applied pieces, and you can see the platform does curve on one side while staying straight on the other. And if you look closely, there's actually texture on the platform with these little little bumps. Since they are separate pieces, they have three different molded in colors. Alright, so let's move on to the roof section. So as you can see, the roof is quite long. It does have an M shape, so it dips down here in the middle. And there also is this white access ladder. Then hanging from the roof, we have a bunch of train signal lights, which I don't know exactly what they are. And there's also this numbered marker to show where the train stops. So I guess the Ford car train would stop here. And here I have a clock. I set it at five. So moving further down along, we have a station name marker on the pole. It says Moroi and station number 32. Now Moroi is actually a parody station. It doesn't exist. You can actually select two other stations, Ibada Koen and Shomyoji. And over here we have a hanging station sign. Apparently the adjacent stations are Sakawa and the next one is Gokaido. And down below we have an advertisement for Midori Driving School. They even included a website URL at the bottom. Then we have some seating for waiting passengers on the platform. It is double sided and comes with armrests. There also is a track access letter on the side. Here is yet another train signal this one looks like a box like a wire in the back then over here we have some LED boards for the train arrival times which you can see it's 11 15 and then next up we have some vending machines they are selling some drinks and they're extremely common in Japan it does look a bit like a paper model though. All right, so moving along, we have another signboard here and the stairs and escalator. And there are some yellow signs saying it's the exit. All right, let's keep moving down the platform. So on this pole, I actually put this emergency train stop button. I guess for instances where people fall on the tracks. I put another clock here and there's some train platform number signs. Then we have another vending machine here. This one's alone. Then we have some recycling bins and a different style advertising board. This one's for a temple. Then we have this wide platform layer labeling board. This segment here just has a signboard on top. And here is the end of the platform. So here's how it looks like from this side. It looks pretty much identical, just the curve is flipped in the other direction, and there are different advertisements on the back of the boards. So now let's go check out the roof. In the middle of the roof, there's actually this clear section right above the escalator, which gives some skylight. And you can see a subtle outline for this part is removable. Now actually, I wasn't sure where to put these signals, so I actually based this mostly off of what was on the box. Now that was pretty successful, except when I came up to this part here, you can see there's a recycling bin here and a bench on the other one. However, if you look on mine, you can see there is nothing here. Unfortunately, they didn't have another panel for the bench accessory. So cool thing on the bottom, there's actually indents which you can cut holes for the wiring. These are sold separately. So here's how the station looks like with lighting. And here is a nighttime view of it. So here you can see the bench is nicely lit. And in real life, I can read what the sign says. The camera doesn't show it quite right. It's a mixture between this and this. You also want to be careful when you're placing the LEDs because it is asymmetrical. Make sure the light actually goes in the middle or else it's going to be one-sided like this. So the vending machines also do have lighting from below, making the displays light up. Unfortunately, it does have some light bleed on the bottom of it. So here's how the station looks like from above. The stairs and escalators are lit. And moving further down the platform, I did come across a problem where it it wouldn't really light up one side of it, it would just be dark, while the other side would be light. And if I remove the signboard above, the lighting becomes much better. I also tried flipping the signboard, but that didn't really help. Let me know if you have a similar issue. And then for this section, I just lit up the areas next to the pillars because I did want the signboard here, but I don't want a shadow. And here's the edge of the platform. And this is how it looks like from the other side. This signboard is actually evenly lit. Now apparently you can add in a blue light filter by using these blue stickers at the end of the platform. And it supposedly gives a calming effect. They install these in Japanese train stations and they reduce the suicide rate. It's kind of grim, but it must work because New York City is experimenting with these as well. But I think I prefer it without the blue lights.
So I also got another train set. This is the E233 series EMU. It has this green and orange livery, which is for the Ueno Tokyo and Tokaido lines. So the set comes with four cars, two end cars, a pantograph car, and a bi-level green car. So let's get started here on this end car. So let's take a look at car number 10. Over here in the front, on top we have the route information boards, the Ueno Tokyo line with access to the Tokaido line, and the headlights and end marker lights. Then below we have this blue gradient. Inside is the driver cab then we have e16 and some car number the bottom one is actually 3d inside then we have three windshield wipers two at the bottom one on the side and it says east japan railway company one thing a bit of there's no gap between japan and railway i've also never noticed this but apparently there is a lip in the front then we have this white triangular edge which i think is iconic to this class then we have this shibata coupler and plows on the sides black paint in the middle and this etched in part so here's how it looks like dead on, very nicely detailed. And the coupler does actually wiggle around a bit. All right, so now let's go check out the side. So down here, we have some printed labels. Then we have the driver cab door, the window. Down below, we have the bogey. Further down, we have two double doors with some train door buttons on the side of them. You may have to manually open the doors for rural stations. There are some molded in details, a vent on top, and boxes on the bottom. And apparently the destination is Odawara. The seats inside are perpendicular to the window. All right, so further along, the J our logo here and in the back it says car number 10 with some handicap symbol so here's how it looks like on the end we have a gangway around the door some molded in details and the doorway is actually a hole we also do have a functional coupler all right now let's check out the other side pretty much the same thing just the underside detail will be different so now let's go check out the roof so on top we have some antennas which we have to add ourselves then in the middle we have this air conditioner unit you can see the fan blades inside very nice and crisp with fan detail molded in it has a nice metallic sheen then in the back there is this white antenna as well. The roof also has some fluting rows across. So now let's go check out the bottom. In the front there is this mechanism here with arrows. Apparently if you push it out the coupler becomes loose as well and it can pivot from side to side. Here is the bogey moving from side to side and there also is a switch over here. This is to turn the taillight on and off with this screwdriver and here's the rest of the bottom. Kato products are made in Japan and here's the back. Alright, so let's compare it to the other end car, car number one. A big difference is this car uses a dummy coupler so it doesn't move at all. And the bottom detail has been mostly flipped to the other side. And this bit near the switch is different. Car one actually has no switch. And the roofs are the same. Alright, so next we're going to take a look at the bi-level car. It's cool because it has two different levels of passengers. It's also known as the green car, which is first class. So in the front we have some windows here, doorway. And here's what it looks like on the end. Inside you can see it's a magenta color. And it's some molded in details throughout. Then in the middle we have this bi-level section. So the upper windows actually have a curve at the top. The seats also have two different colors, blue at the top and magenta at the bottom. Also the window divider colors are different as well. And on this side there is three windows and a box at the bottom. Now on this end for some reason there is no window in the doorway. Now the other side of the car it's pretty much identical. The only difference is this side has a window here while the other side it does not because I believe that's where the bathroom is. And here's what it looks like on the roof. On the end we have this air conditioner unit, light gray box, and a radio antenna. While on the other side it's pretty much the same thing, just no antenna. The design for the ACs are actually quite different. And here's what it looks like from the bottom. Alright, so this is the last car, the pantograph car. Here's what it looks like from the front, pretty plain. And here's a view of it from the side. This one has a solid bottom because it's also the motor car. And if you go on this side, this end actually does have a lot of detail molded in. You can see some wires going up to the pantograph. And here's how it looks like from this side. Now let's take a look at the roof. There is a radio antenna here, the AC unit in the middle, and the pantograph to get electricity from overhead lines. To raise it up, you just simply pull it up like this. It looks pretty nice, and if you want to put it away, you just push it down. So here's what it looks like from the bottom view. You can see there are three gears in the traction motor, so this car doesn't roll. So when assembling a train, you can't actually connect the two end cars together because one of them is going to be a dummy coupler. But for the one with the real hole, you can actually hook it up to another car. And and it's interesting there's a bottom link as well and for more range of motion just push the coupler out then it could swing even tighter radius curves Coupling the rest of the cars should be pretty easy, just snap them together. So here's the full train finally assembled with four cars. 
So now it's compared to the E235 from the Yamanote line. They have different styles in the front. This one's sort of on an angle, while this one is flat. They also have different plow designs. The position of the antennas, the windows, and the doors are pretty much the same. These back antennas, though, are different. The AC units also have a different style. And surprisingly, the bogey is different as well. There's a different design, at least in the front car. And they also have different placement of the window dividers. The Yamanote has bench seats, while this car has seats facing forward. The underside's pretty different as well. And for the pantographs they're pretty similar but the wiring is a bit different and the Yamanote has a lighter shade of gray for the pantograph. So I really like the idea of this Kato N-Scale train station. It's pretty easy to assemble. I like the fact that it doesn't require gluing pieces together and it has different molded in colors which actually look pretty good so you don't really need to paint it. It's also pretty convenient. You could just store it back in the box and there's all sorts of accessories and it's pretty customizable. You can put this wherever you want. Now one problem I came across was the signage stickers so it wouldn't really stick well if you bend it. So what I recommend is just cutting straight edges out individually so it doesn't need to bend at all and it's pretty much 
required to do the emergency red stripes on the pole, or else it's not gonna work. It's also pretty clever, the lights use the same track as HR scale unit tracks. I do wish I also had lighting in the trains, which would have made it look even better. As for the E233, I mainly bought it because I thought it's pretty unique to have a bi-level car. It's actually surprising how many differences there were between the models despite them being both commuter EMUs. Unfortunately, the coupler designs are not compatible. On our Discord, Lila says the extra link on the bottom is so that it can pull more cars, as I believe the full train set's like 15 cars long. I also tried flicking the switch for the taillight, but that doesn't really seem to do anything. Overall though, it's a great quality train and looks pretty cool. And thanks a lot to BunzaiHobby.com for sponsoring this video. They are an online hobby store from Japan that sells a variety of products like model trains, gunpla, scale model kits, RC cars, tools. So if you're interested in any of that, check them out. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.